Peace, peace. I'm back with another lesson. I'm trying to free your all's minds. This Bible that you've been taught and trained to believe in is a fictitious, fictitious book. It's not real. No matter how hard you want to believe the stories, none of that stuff took place. Now I'm going to prove it, and I'm going to read to you from this book, Drunk with Blood, God's Killings in the Bible. I'm going to take you through a couple of sections in this book, and I'm going to read to you the nasty, disgusting things that goes on this, uh, in this Bible that people do not read, and they overread it, and they can't explain it. And you say the Bible is, is literal. You take the, you take the book literally, they say that they, they claim, and the people who, who are these they, they say this and they say that. Well, the, the they are the your know, normal Christians, the Hebrew Israelites, and, and whoever else uh, claim that the Bible is a metaphysical, spiritual book. But I'm going to just prove that the Bible is a man made book. All those prophecies are, 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 are false, and it's fake. Now, The Bible is a storybook written by, told by black people. They came up with the characters and they came up with the, the so the main characters in the Bible is God, Jesus, Abraham, Moses, Isaac, Jacob, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Solomon, uh, uh, Judas. Like, just think about this, man. Think about this. It says that, it says that uh, Judas hung himself, right? And in the New Testament, it said Judas, Judas, Judas hung himself. And it says that he, when he hung himself in the tree, he fell. And, all, and when he fell to the ground, all his intestines came out of him. Right? That's what's read in the Bible. Well, who was there to witness that event? Who was there dictating how Judas was, was killed? With the flood, Noah's flood. God tells Noah to build an ark and put two pair of every, every animal on a boat. Well, and he told Noah to seal the ark up for 40 days and 40 nights. You know the story. And he goes on to say that um, so you got all these animals on the boat. How the hell is Noah feeding all these animals? Because you have different animals that eat different foods. What type of water are they drinking? You can't drink the seawater because it's salty. How is Noah cleaning up all that shit? And how is Noah keeping himself clean? He has to take he has to take a dump. He got to use the bathroom. He got to pee. He got to he got to uh, he has to urinate. How is he doing this on the boat? And you have different animals that shitting all over the boat, all over the boat. How is he cleaning the boat up? Do we got a do we got a shovel? Do we got a do we got a shovel and, and shoveling the shit out the window? Answer that. You can't, cause it's false. It never happened. It never happened. Now, let me read this to you real quick. And then we're going to go back to this site here. Uh, God is imaginary. And I've already proven to you who God is. Who and what God is. But the God in the Bible is imaginary. He's made up. He's fiction. He's fictitious. Black folks came with the concept of God. So, back in this book right here, 50 reasons people give for believing in the God. We're going to go to... Chapter 12, A Scared Book Proves My God is Real. So you got Quran, chapter 2, verse 2, and it says, This book is not to be doubted, right? Okay. Right? It says, Mark Twain says, 
it ain't the parts of the Bible that I can't understand that bothers me. It is the parts that I do understand. Listen to this. Many people depend heavily on a book to justify their belief in a particular God or gods. Right? Where would Judaism be without the written Torah or Christianity without the Bible? The uh, Bhagavad Gita is precious to Hindus. It is unlikely that Islam could have been so, so successful without the Quran. The Book of Mormon was the catalyst of a new religion in North America in the 19th century. These books and others, various believers claim, are messages from their gods, and as such, they are invaluable and valuable resources for humankind. According to believers, sacred books may explain our origin, guide us through daily life, and even tell us what happened to us when we die. According to believers, their book offers conclusive proof that their, that their particular God is real. It is important to note, however, that despite claims that these books are, are of divine origin, not one of them has ever been able to convince a majority of the world's believers that it is anything more than a book written by people. Okay? Now, we're going to go here to uh, we're gonna go here to this site right here okay now check this out let's read this let's read this okay I'm trying to free your minds I'm trying to get you out of the other uh, fantasy zone you got grown we got grown ass adults believing in Bibles believing in kitty stories Believing in stories that never happened. You got a man on a boat with, with, with hundreds of animals of different species, and they all eat different foods. How they drink water. They say in this in the story, it says that Moses, it says that Noah had uh had um had um um put all these boats I'll put all these animals on the boat. And how is he keeping all these animals fed? The human body, the body can only go, the body cannot even go not that long without food and water, let alone water. Or is you going to start hallucinating? You're going to start having, having visions. Because your brain is, is becoming dehydrated. It's not getting enough, it's not getting any oxygen because water is a form of oxygen, H2O. And, and the majority, 70% of our bodies are made up of water, H2O, oxygen. But let's keep on going for you, for you Bible believers. Okay? For you Bible believers, we're going we're gonna to tear, tear that down because it's a storybook. But you don't understand who wrote the damn book. All right. So let's read this. So it says here. It says, imagine that Chris and Norm are good friends. One day they are talking. He says, Chris, wow. So Chris says, wow, you would not believe this book I'm reading. Norm says, what's it about? Chris says, it's a manual for living a better life. It is also a guide to creating a guide to creating a better society for ourselves and our children. It has changed my life. Norm says, that sounds like an important book. Who wrote it? Chris says, the author is supposed to be the smartest person in the universe. Norm says, that's amazing. If the author is the smartest person in the universe, the book must be absolutely brilliant. I can't wait to see it. Do you have a copy with you? Chris says, absolutely. I carry it with me everywhere I go. Here, have a look for yourself. Norm opens the book to a random page and he finds this. Consecrate yourselves, therefore, and be holy. For I am the Lord your God. Keep my statutes and observe them. I am the Lord. I sanctify you. All who curse father, 
all who curse father and mother shall be put to death. Having cursed father and mother, their blood is upon them. And it, it's just in Leviticus 20, right? You can read that for yourself. And it says, Norm is not quite sure what to say. He looks at Chris for a moment. He says, Norm, I thought you said that this is written by the most intelligent person in the universe. If we are going to follow what this author says, we have to kill half the people in America. We are supposed to kill everyone who has cursed his father or mother. Everyone who has committed adultery and even homosexual. Chris says, well, that's in the Old Testament, you see. The book is really two, the, the book is really two books. And the old part of the book doesn't really apply. Norm says, are you saying that the smartest person in the universe once wanted us to kill every adulterer and homosexual but then change his mind? That's how, that's, that's someone, it says, that's how, uh, that somehow makes it better. If the old part is no, is no longer applies, then why did you hand it to me? Chris says, well, parts of it do apply. Norm says, did you just tell me that it doesn't apply? So it says, Norm opens up another passage, and he starts reading this shit. Okay? And let's keep on going. So he's reading all this stuff, right? And at the end of the conclusion, when they had the, had the conclusion of the matter, um, Norm concludes, he says, as Norm pages through the book further, he finds that it is totally sexist from be beginning to end, talking about the Bible. Norm keeps opening the book to random pages, and nearly everything he finds is utter nonsense. Either it is meaningless completely irre irre irrelevant, disgusting, or downright wrong. If Norm is a scientist, it says, if Norm is a scientist, it is even worse. And this starts with the very first line. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says, that's not true. In the beginning, a natural event created the universe as we know it, and the earth did not form until billions of years later. It says the, the creation of the Genesis story is completely wrong and things like that. I already exposed all that junk. Okay? And you can read this for yourself. And now we're going to go into this book right here called uh, and it's called uh Drunk with Blood, God's Killings in the Bible. Now let's read something now. Let, let me go back to this and reiterate the fact to you that all of this is fiction. None of this never happened. But people are believing in this and they think it happened. So, you have here, this is the Africans wrote the Bible. So, once again, let me Reiterate it. Reiterate, reiterate this. Our ancestors came up with the concept of God, of heaven and hell. Okay? The spirit world and the dream world are one and the same damn thing. It's not real. It's not real. It's, it's, it's false. Your brain makes that stuff happen. That's how powerful the brain is. Can you can you just think? So, once again, it says, origin of the, con of, con of the concept of a male God who lives in the sky. It says, Christianity believes that God resides somewhere in the sky, but when I ask Christians how they came to know that God resides somewhere in the sky, some say it is God that revealed his abode to humans. So it says, it talks about, that. I went over this before, right? And it says here that, How did all religions on earth come to believe that their gods are all male? The ancient Egyptian concept of a male god that lives in the sky was, was what was passed on into Christianity and in Europe and religions around the world. Today, every religion, religion's god is a male. What is fascinating about this concept is that modern Akan people 
that created these ancient concepts still believes in Osoro and Asasi and prays to them. This belief can still be found in a calm prayer in the form of the pouring of libation to God. So your Khan, the Hausa, the Ewe, the Igbo, these are all, these are Egyptians. These are black folks. These are Negroes. They were all known as niggas at one at, at one point in time in the beginning. And then as they start branching off, you know how families start fighting amongst each other. They start forming their own sex and groups. But you niggas can't tell the, the difference. But let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. Let's go here to the book. Drunk with blood, God's killing is in the Bible. I'm gonna read some of this stuff to you. I wanna I wanna get the comments down below. I wanna see if you niggas actually believe this stuff actually happened in the Bible. Now, once again, we're gonna go back here and show to you and show you that black folks came up with the concept of God. So God is not saying none of this shit in the Bible. When it says the Lord God, the Lord God said, I'm gonna kill you and smite this and smite that one. God ain't saying none of that shit. That's man saying that. But it's stories. It's stories. Now, if I, I went over this in my last lesson, the creation of religion and the concept of God. Black folks came up with the concept of God, the concept of angels, the concept of, of, of heaven, the concept of hell. That's why you believe it. It's a belief. You're taking on someone else's beliefs. Matter of fact, let's do this real quick before I go into these, these killings. Before I go into these killings. So let's do this. Let's go here to... Um, what's the guy's name? Uh, atheist. Okay, let's go here to right here. Egyptians, the earliest system of occult and esoteric thought used in a means of salvation and practiced through mysticism, pantheism, and magic emerged in ancient Egypt. Okay? So your concept, so the concept of death, heaven, and hell came from black folks' imaginations. So there's no such thing as heaven and hell. It's all imagination. Okay, now, let's do this, let's put this to the side, and let's do this guy talk. I'm not afraid of dying, they'll be 
dying if I do get AIDS or something like that. I don't give a fuck. I hate life. I've never enjoyed one moment on this planet. I don't want to live forever. And the only people who want to live, I'm not worried about dying because I'm an atheist, right? Uh, now, I know that this is a Christian country and I, I stand up for your right to be religious, but please know that you're wrong, right? Please know. Stop being a fucking child. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not scared of dying because I'm an atheist. I know I'll just rot in the ground, right? I won't even know I'm dead. Do you want to know why? Because I'll be fucking dead. <laughs> Religious people worry because they believe in heaven. If there's a heaven, there has to be a hell. And everyone who's read that book knows that you've done enough shit to go to hell, right? And that makes it very stressful on your deathbed, doesn't it? No one want to prick you. I go, oh, this isn't going to be good. I, I don't want to go to heaven. I don't, I don't even want the option of heaven. I don't want to exist in a conscious state for the rest of eternity, constantly thinking. I don't like thinking as it is. Where's my passport? Can't punch women in the face. <laughs> the Bible calls heaven eternal bliss. I don't care how blissful it is. It's eternal. You'll get used to it, and then you'll be fucking bored. <laughs> What's hell meant to be like? Fire and brimstone and eternal agony? That's what's written in the Bible. That's God's book. As far as I know, the devil hasn't brought out a book. We don't know his side of the argument, right? If you ask me, the devil and God are having an argument. The devil's being a bigger fucking man. Because God's just writing shit about him. And the devil's going, I'm not even going to fucking comment, son, if you're talking about me like that. is rationally, right? Which isn't a good point for the Christians, rational thought. <laughs> Fire and brimstone and eternal agony. That's what's meant to hell meant to be like. That's written in the Bible. Now, God runs the entire universe except for one place which is run by hell. And the devil is run by the devil. Now, the devil is his biggest enemy and they don't get along whatsoever, right? Now, if you act bad, you go to hell, right? Now, you've lied, you've cheated, you've stole, you've been a prick your entire life. Why would the devil punish you? You're one of his boys. <laughs> He's going to fucking dig you. Now, remember, it's all fiction. None of this stuff it never happened. I just told you that heaven, hell, and God are imaginary. It's not real. Black people came up with that concept and idea. Because they didn't know how, we got, how, they, how they got here. Don't quote my verses. Show proof. I'm proving all, I'm proving this stuff. That's where all the hookers and drugs are going to be. Let's fast forward some of this stuff. Heaven. Don't think God's a big bright light. You walk towards... You'd be out there for an hour going, wish you all me friends would die. Be out there meeting everyone. Hello, Nana. Hello, Granddad. Hello, Uncle who used to touch me. How did you get up here? That's right, you used to work for the church. <laughs> you hear that little groan when I said that? When I said you have to work for the church? It's because religious people are in the crowd and they don't like hearing facts. <laughs> That's a fact. There's been pedophiles in the Catholic Church. It's been on 60 Minutes. Fuck a new thing. If he, he, in their mind, he does good things. Rainbows, children's love. Oh, well, God works in mysterious ways. <laughs> what type of an excuse is that? What, what, is, what is mysterious about acting like a fucking asshole? That is like the least mysterious activity since the dawn of time. <laughs> Do it. I'm going to go, oh, mysterious. Religious people are just fucking stupid. There's how the world was created, which everyone, scientists and rational thinking people believe, and that's the Big Bang Theory, and then evolution kicked in. There's all microorganisms made like a tadpole, and that tad... And that's, and, and that's, what, that's what I like about atheists. Their, their conclusion of the matter is, I don't know. What's going to happen when you die? I don't know. Oh, well, let me go into the book. In the book, it says you're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to hell if you don't do this. Well, who wrote that book? How do they know? I'll let out a walk or something.
done, and then there was some animals in between, and then fucking monkeys, and then us. And that's science. Then, then there's our religious people believe it was created, and that's creationism. They believe that uh, God put two white people in the jungle without sunscreen, and they fucked, and now we got people. People are, people are handled, people like the amount of inbreeding, very few retards. It seems so plausible. See, the fact is that there's evolution in the Bible, right? Jesus was four foot seven. Four foot seven. He was a normal sized guy. Everyone was short back then. We're all tall now because of evolution. That's how Jesus could feed the people with two fish. Little fucking people, big fucking fish. So this is Jesus here, right? He's a little tiny Arab Jew. He looks like Super Mario. Now, if Jesus is this big, that means his cross was maybe, maybe that big. <laughs> now, I'm not saying I'm better than Jesus. But if I was on that little cross... My feet would be on the ground and I'd fucking live. So what killed Jesus could not kill me. I'm way more powerful. Not only would I live, but I would lift the cross out of the ground and beat up all the little Roman bastards. And history would be very different. Thousands of years before Jesus, there was a good... And I'm asking you all to unsubscribe from my channel. Because I know you're going to come down and comment down on my channel and say... I've fallen away and I've been led astray and demons have got a hold of me. Look, angels and demons are not real. They're not real. It's all imagination. So you got two billion years ago to have black folks walking on earth. Why come those angels and demons and attack them? Answer that. What commandments were they going by back then? What laws? called Noah, and Noah built a boat, and Noah lived to be 950 years old. But they never mention that in sermons, because we might think it's bullshit. Now, let's go to one more. Bill Burr. I like this guy. He's funny. Bill Burr. Religion. And he says, right here. you're into, but I don't know. I'm not into that religious stuff where, uh, this is why I actually walked away from my religion. Just, I had to be honest with myself. One, I didn't like to go, I didn't like going to church every week, you know. <laughs> I just didn't. Part of it was I'm lazy. I don't like getting up on Sunday. And the other part was I already heard all the stories. Okay? Heard it three, four times. The dude hasn't come back yet. You know, we're just sort of mulching over the same shit here. I got it. Right? And the other aspect was, you know, I actually, uh, I had to be honest with myself, I felt my religion made sense and everybody else's sounded stupid. <laughs> I did. Look, the, I'm not talking about the basis of every religion. The basis of every religion makes sense. You know, the Ten Commandments, right? Don't kill anybody. Don't touch my wife. That's my bike. Right? That all makes sense. Up which I broke a I think I've broken about every commandment except for the fifth one. That's it. I haven't killed anybody yet. All right? But the murderous thoughts that I have sometimes, I, I think I can do it. Like when someone gets on a plane and they kick off their loafers and they're wearing those wrapping nets. See the whole thing. So we'll see. Still early on, right? But just the stories of how we got here and where we're going and what happens after we die. Everybody else's religion sounds stupid, you know? Like I live out in Los Angeles, there's a bunch of Scientologists out there. And the first time I heard the story of Scientology, I was like, that is the dumbest shit <laughs> I have ever heard in my life. Yeah. Like, your, your guy's name is Ron. Ron. And he wasn't alive thousands of years ago, so you can hide a lot of it in the mystery. This guy was alive like 45, 50 years ago. He had a driver's license, social security number, there's like footage of him subbing his toe, motherfucker, right? Yeah, I don't know what happened, he was working at Denny's, he got sick of 
attention, everybody. There's a spaceship coming back. Ooh, fast forward to that. We fed in sight to the fan parent. Simultaneously, still kind of believing that a woman would never got fucked and a baby that walked on water and died and came back three days later.
So you got these killings, right? And the first, so how many people, so who did, who did Satan ever kill? Who did the devil ever kill? The devil didn't kill nobody. It's always God doing all the killing. But remember, you, keep, you have to keep in mind that these are nothing but stories. They're nothing but stories. Okay? The stories, they never, it never happened. You have historical black people telling, coming up with stories. Okay? So, let's go here to... Let's go here to some of these killers. Alright? And I want you to see, do you believe this shit? Okay? So you got here... Let's see. Let's go here to... Uh, There's killings in the, in the Apocrypha. There's killings all through the, all throughout this goddamn book. So it says here, this is in uh, Leviticus 10, 11. God burns Aaron's son to death for offering strange fires. Uh, uh, Leviticus 24, 10, 11. A blasphemer is stoned to death. Um... This is Numbers chapter 15, verse 32. Sticks and stones. A man gathers sticks on a Sabbath day and stone to death. A man, uh, a man is caught gathering sticks on a Sabbath day. While the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon a Sabbath day. The people asked Moses what to do about it. They brought him unto Moses and Aaron because it was not declared what should be done to him. God tells Moses that everyone must be stoned, must stone the Sabbath workers to death. The Lord said to Moses, the man shall, shall be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones. This is, this is some sick shit. It's death all throughout that damn Bible. And you niggas are believing it. Let's keep on going. Um, you got here. What chapter, what verse is this? Um, God burns 250 people to death for burning incense. incense. Okay? Uh, you got number 16, chapter 16, verse 1 through 3. God killed 14,700 for complaining about his killings. You can read, you can read this on your own. But God is not saying none of this stuff. It's man saying this. Okay. Let's keep on going. And you can call me an atheist. I don't give a shit what you call me. I'm exposing your Bible. For you believe in goddamn fairy tales. And I was one, I was one myself. 42,000 killed for failing the Shebo Leaf test. They're, so you got 42,000 people were killed because they can't say this word correctly. And he goes into this, in this book, in this book right here, the Africans wrote the Bible. He goes into the same damn thing. And he exposes it. And he tells you what tribes came up with that, came up with that. Um... I wish I would have had it highlighted. Here it is. Here it is. I'm proving all this shit. Here you go. So, that passage. 42,000 killed for failing the Shebo Leaf Test. That's in chapter... Uh, that's in Judges chapter 12. The men, the men of Ephraim gathered themselves together and went northward instead of the Japheth. And they're talking about the saying uh, Shebo Leaf or Shebo Law. All that shit. Let's go here to this book right here, the Avenue of the Bible. And it says here that so the so Ephraim, all the all the all the all the Ephraim, Ephraimites and the Gileanites, who are these people in real life? These people, the Ephraim, the Ephraimites and the Gileanites are a group of people called the God, the God people. And they 
live among the uh, the God and the common people live in Ghana. So it says here that when Europeans, Christians, and Bible scholars have never known, what Europeans, Christians, and Bible scholars have never known is that the biblical word Shebo left was a corruption of an of an African word. The word Shebo leaf is a linguistic corruption of the words in the God language. The people and the language can be found today in, in southern Ghana and West Africa. This is the language of the people in Accre, the capital of Ghana. The God sentence was that was corrupted into the biblical word Shebo leaf was Ashi Gebele, meaning Ashi killed him. The God sentence Ashi Gebele was what was corrupted to Sheb Gebele and then to the biblical Shebo Leth. Ashi is a God male is a God male name. And the context in which this name and words were used as military passwords and semantically uh, perfect. The failure of the Evamites to pronounce these words correctly was due to the fact that the Aphromites or Ephraimites spoke the Akan language. So these Ephraimites and Gileonites are Akan people. But the Gileonites and the, and the Ephraimites are fictitious people. They're not real. But the people telling the stories, the Akan and the God people are real. So it says here that, um, that this language does not have the SH consonant combination as it is in the God language. This revelation shows that the people that were the biblical Gileonites spoke the God language and therefore they were the God people. The God people are black and this also, also confirms that the Ephraimites were also black people and this was the reason the, the Gileonites could not differentiate between the Ephraimites and the Gileonites except through differences in their language in their languages. I'm breaking this shit down for you. Let's keep on going. Who else? Who, I mean, I'm, what else killings happen in the Bible? Um, let's see. You get in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23, God sent two bears to rip apart 42 boys for making fun of a prophet's bald head. After Elijah went up to heaven in the chariot of fire, his disciples, Elisha, put on Elijah's mantle and started to perform miracles of their own, of his own. First he parted the Jordan by first he parted the Jordan River by slapping it with Elijah's mantle, and then he healed some water by adding a bit of salt, right? And it says, then he decided to go, go to Bethel. While he was walking alone, a group of 42 young boys started to make fun of Elisha's bald head. Second Kings, as he was going up by the ways, there came forth little children out of the city and mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, and uh, go up, thou bald head. So Elisha decided to try, try his newfound prophet's power by cursing the little buggers. Right? And it says here that, he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Okay? And it says here that uh, there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. You see that? What else we got here? You got here. Let me go to the end, right? Let me go to the end. Okay? These are all the killings that's in the Bible. And you don't and you Negroes, you niggas don't question a damn thing. You believe all this shit happened. So you got here. Let's see here. 
the Lord said to David, go and smite the Philistines, right? So, so David is killing these Philistines, and he's cutting off their foreskins. He cut off 200 foreskins. Read it. So you got here, in the Apocrypha, This is, this is a horrific book, and you niggas don't read a damn thing. So you got the Apocrypha. So, so in this book right here, the African Dwarf, the Bible, where did all these lost books come from? Like, like here, um, you got the first book of Edris, the second book of Edris, Tobit, Judah, uh, Addictions of the book of Esther, the Wisdom of Solomon, Baruch, the letter of Jeremiah, Susanna, the Bell and the Dragon, the Prayer of Manasseh, the first book of Maccabees, the second book of Maccabees. Where the hell all these missing books come from? These pop out of thin air. I'll tell you where they came from. It was made up. Made up. It's bullshit. Don't get mad at me. The Apocrypha. The Old Testament, New Testaments are not the only religious documents of Christianity. In the earlier years of Christianity, Many religious scholars who knew the sources of the biblical documents also wanted to add their own ideas to the Bible. As a result, many documents of dubious authenticity floated around earlier Christian communities and very strange circumstances began to, began to surround the earlier years of the creation of the Bible. This is also one of the reasons the names of the authors of the New Testament had to be concealed. However, the Christian community finally found out that some of the writings they believed to have been written from the ordination of God was downright fictitious. Among the supposed fictitious Christian writings were the documents that were compiled into what is now called the Apocrypha. Among the synonyms of the Greek word Apocrypha are doubtfully often disputed, fraudulent, spurious, fictitious, and fake. These synonyms show that there were numerous, numerous fictitious claiming to be Christian documents and that the and that the documents of the Apocrypha were not religious books worthy to be included in the documents of the Bible of early Christian community. Now let's jump over here and it's, it talks about all this stuff, right? And it says why they did all these things. Now, let me go back to the Bible of time. Back to the Apocrypha. And you're going to see, you have women killing people too. So you got David chopping off Goliath's head. I thought God said, Thou shalt not kill. Why is God going against his own commandments? It seems to me like God is confused. But remember, it's all stories. God didn't say none of this stuff. It's all stories. Samson killed 3,000 in a suicide terrorist attack. This is in Judges. Judges chapter 16, verse 1. Why aren't your camps breaking this stuff down? Because they're making money off your ass. That's why. That's why. Talking about, the, oh, the Lord told me this. The Lord told me that. Uh, he spoke to me in a small, still voice. Bullshit. That's you. You said that. God didn't say none of that stuff. You can quote Bible verses all damn day long, but you gotta deal with the facts. I'm bringing facts. I'm bringing things out that you Negroes and you other folks who believe in the Bible and all these other religious books don't read a damn thing. Now let's go back here to uh, the Apocrypha section, right? I got ten minutes left. Uh, 248. 248. Okay, so now we're in the Apocrypha. The books in the Apocrypha, a.k.a. the uh, Deuteronomy books, add another 20 killers to God's list. The first three involve beautiful women, Susanna and Judah. The rest are told in the book, are told in the books of the Maccabees. So your camps love to quote the book of Maccabees, 1st and 2nd Maccabees. 
But why don't they talk about the killings that's happening up in here? Okay? So you got here, Judith is blessed above all women for cutting off a sleeping man's head. Judges chapter 5, verse 24. Blessed above all women, blessed above all women shall JL be. Blessed shall she be above all above women. She put her her hand to the nail, and with the hammer she smote uh, Cedra. She smote off his head. When she had pierced and stricken through his temples. Look at this. She cut off a nigga head. Somebody head. Judah, the Judith massacre hanged ye up this head upon our walls. So she cutting off people's heads and hanging them up on people's walls. On, on the walls. Uh, did you actually believe these stories? This Bible is horrific. They cut off people's heads. Women. They commit, c committed mass murders. The women, the women not getting off on, on this. They cut off people's heads. Because so-called God told them to do it. Bullshit. And you fools believing in this shit. When it's all, it's all make-believe. It's all make believe. Who did who did Satan ever kill? Who did the devil ever kill? He's always getting blamed. Who the hell that who the hell he ever killed? He didn't kill nobody. So why is he taking the blame? For somebody else's um uh wrongdoings, mistakes. But go ahead and believe. Go ahead and keep on believing in this in this in this sick twisted stuff. When I'm showing and proving to you who came up, who came with the Bible you believe in. Um. So when you total up the killings of God, of God, God killed 4.7 billion people. Satan killed zero. And in the end, he says here that he says here that now that I have told you these stories, I have a, a confession to make. I don't believe that any of these killings actually happened with the possible exception of the last one. There was no worldwide flood of Noah, no fiery serpents, no prophets eating lions, no children killing bears, no divinely fashioned hemorrhoids, or no rotting body part messages, no giants for God to kill, Samson didn't kill 30 men for their clothes, David didn't buy a wife with 200 Philistines foreskins, and things of that nature. So when it talks about Dan, Daniels and the lions then, can you tell me the name of the person who they're witnessing and recording Daniel and the lions, Daniel and the lions then about to get ate, hell, about to get ate up? Who is there recording those events? Give us a name. If you can't, that means it's bullshit. It never happened. Grown adults believing in fairy tales. If you want to free your mind from all this bullshit, come to my channel and learn the truth. I don't want your money. And if I if I really wanted to, I can I can start exposing people. You got people people on here, look at like here for instance, you got the Watchmen report. And these people are selling necklaces and if you go to their channel, if you go to their channel and they got a, they got a, uh, they have a, um, 
a web page. They have a website. Okay? And they said you can donate back to Egypt fundraiser. Uh, they got, uh, let's see. They got a store. And look what they're selling. Watchmen DVDs, $100. Uh, they selling one hand handcrafted yard necklaces for $34. Uh, a handcrafted stone for $49. What else? These people are no better than the church. They just got another name. And they pimp y'all asses. And you niggas are buying this shit. A $59 custom name with with the Borea with the Borea's name on it, and and with and with this shit on here for fifty nine dollars, custom man name handcrafted necklace double side black and gold, and you got fools on here actually buying this shit. And you niggas are actually believing this shit, and you buying and you giving these people your money. And then you want to find out, you want to, you want to uh, cry and bitch and moan. Oh, I'm going to pay for my damn light bill and gas bill. You just gave these fools all your own, your hard earned check. Well, you can look this shit up on your own, do your own damn research, and draw your own conclusions. And when it comes down to it, if you knew what was going to happen to you after death, you wouldn't, believe, you wouldn't even want to uh, uh, read the Bible or any book. Only know only reason you know about a God is because when you open up a damn book. That's facts. That's facts. You will not know about God because uh, until somebody to, until somebody told you about him in a damn book. Whether it be the whether it be Buddha, Krishna, uh, Allah, Jesus, Jehovah, uh, 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 the gods that's over there in Africa, they got a million names for God. In the Akan language, in the Akan religion, they call him o, uh, o, o, Nayame. You, you got Nayame, Nayame, Akan, Akan, uh, Akan God, right? The Akan people, right? And they got Nayame and uh, Anasasi, okay? And this is this is these are the guys. These are the guys who they pray to. Okay? And he's the Lord of the sky. Right? And they all say the same thing. Now, Yame is the God of the Akan people. His name means he who knows and sees everything and omniscient, omnipotent sky God in the Akan language. These are the people who came with your, with your Bible through oral tradition. Black people, through pure, through pure imagination, and it's not just them, it's other tribes that came up with the, with the Bible. So the Akan people are your ancient Egyptians. The Akan, the Akan people, the one of the tribes that I come from, the, the House of People, these are your ancient Egyptians. These are your ancient Egyptians. And it's other tribes. It's not just them. You got the Yoruba people. And these people were called, and these and these white folks, these Neanderthals, called our ancient ancestors pagans. But how the hell can they be pagans when the when the uh, when the, the concept of God that you believe in is the same God that, that you stole from them? And what and put a twist on that shit. You damn hypocrites. Like I said, you can unsubscribe my channel, I'll give you full permission. Full permission. It's not gonna make or break me, but I know one thing: you can say, "Oh, the Lord God gonna smoke. He gonna uh, 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 strike you down with with uh, fire, brimstone, and fire, and all that shit." Guess what? It's all pure imagination. You niggas are afraid. Of, you are afraid of death. You afraid of death. With that being said, peace.